Well, as I've said before, the traditionalist views of the far right has been gaining ground. Some of the people who hold these beliefs will jump up and down stating that they're not far right because they don't believe in an authoritarian government. They completely ignore the vertical axis of the political compass. And some of this is about language. What language should someone really use to describe some, a whole set of rather extreme positions that they're not willing to budge on? It doesn't matter whether or not some of these people that believe these things think that the government should get involved or not. One doesn't have to believe in an authoritarian government to have those beliefs. Someone could be a libertarian and hold these beliefs. They often think that women should be docile and controllable. Many of them think black people are inferior. They think that homosexuality is degeneracy. They think that all trans people are mentally ill. Many think that porn is degeneracy. Many think that most illegal immigrants are criminal-minded and that they mess up the job market. They think that most Muslims living in industrialized countries have no desire to integrate. And no amount of proof of otherwise will change these people's minds. Science doesn't matter unless it's a very specific type of science. Statistics don't matter unless you can find this one, one study that pushes things in your direction. And then that's the, only one, that's the only statistic that matters, right? Anecdotal evidence doesn't matter. These people are going to have these types of beliefs unless they experience a major life-changing event. And even that might not do it. Sometimes it honestly makes me want to give up having discussions and doing social commentary videos. I'm not. I'm, I'm, well, I can't say I'm not, but I'm likely not going to. But, but the only thing that I seem to accomplish in having discussions with some of these types of people is learning why these people have the beliefs that they have. And in learning why, I have to ask a lot of questions. And I have to try to be very peaceful. They could state something that's foul enough for me to almost be traumatized by it. And I have to pretend that, hey, let's just be peaceful. I haven't always been very good at that. And I'm still not that great at it. But I'm certainly better than I used to be. But honestly, you know, I'm not very good at defending my beliefs because I try to be open-minded. I, I continually ask, well, well, what if I'm wrong? And I can't expect other people to do that same thing. You know, but again, some of the only kinds of things that would have even a chance of making some of these people change their minds is a life-changing event. Sure, I can change the minds of people who are riding the fence. I can change the minds of people who are, who are very open-minded. Maybe not change the minds, but at least make them look more into it, you know? The, the people who are really reasonable. But I'm not even going to put a tiny dent in the people who have completely made up their mind. Someone being very verbose and well-spoken does not mean that they're open-minded. And that's the biggest lesson I've learned in, you know, somewhat recently. And this goes both ways. The people who solidly believe that women are the same as men. The people who believe there are hundreds of genders. The people who think that no new way of looking at gender could be wrong because the concepts come from marginalized people. The people who essentially believe that there are no differences between people based on biology. The people who think the world will begin to end or will end in 12 years. The people who think that teaching very young children post-pubescent adult concepts is a healthy thing for society, or their kids. Yeah, people like that are probably not going to change their minds either, no matter how much proof or evidence is shown to them of any kind. So where does that leave me? I don't know the answer to that. I don't know if I want to know more about why some people hold such extreme positions. I'm just tired of hearing such toxic positions from both sides. I'm tired of feeling like I'm holding on to the middle portion of a rope in a tug of war. I do see the right wing as being much better at explaining their positions.
But they're also much better at insults when their positions are questioned. I see the left as throwing a tantrum and calling everyone ists whenever people don't agree with everything that they say. The left throws tantrums, the right throws insults. Maybe I'll just take a break for a while, who knows. I just know that my hopes have been dashed. When I thought that I might be making somehow a bit of difference when it comes to people on the right, I found that almost all I've been doing is pandering to their arguments. At times, I've essentially been like a seldom-heard-of version of Dave Rubin. I've made fun of Dave a lot, but I've been finding I've been doing some of the same things in an attempt to be peaceful. I don't really know what more to say right now. It's a little depressing, though. I've been getting on Second Life a little more. I'll probably be DJing in Second Life here pretty soon again. I'll also be visiting with friends in real life more. Hopefully I'll be working on music more. Maybe I'll make more walking videos. Go to some cities and walk through cities. But I'm so burned out on listening to people try to justify their bigoted beliefs. So burned out on it. What good does any of it do to me? How do I benefit from it? Beneful? 